speak about the Palestine Expansion Fund, which is the first scientific European society that systematically uh, explored the Holy Land. And um, just one remark about before I start speaking, I'm not working in the Palestine Expansion Fund. So my presentation is based <coughs> on uh, uh, my experience several times visiting there and working there as a, a person who received a grant in order to conduct research in the archives. So obviously I cannot cover all the topics that are hosted <coughs> in the archives. I'll try to cover as much as possible based on my personal knowledge of the topic. So um, I brought this picture not because uh, it's a very good picture of me, <laughs> definitely not, but because I wanted to show you what kind of materials you can find when you travel to London to the archives. By the way, this is their old office. And you can see over here is our maps. Over here you have sketches and plans that are arranged in boxes. Um, you have a lot of files. Uh, you also have artifacts. These artifacts originate from archaeological excavations. They also originate from different um, uh, museum exhibitions that they obtained, and so on. So basically, there is endless information in these archives, and most of it was not sorted. That is uh, one example of a file. Uh, this is a sketch of one of the maps of uh, the famous survey of Western Palestine. Uh, just one example, and uh, in a second I'll show you some figures that I obtained from their office about the number of uh, documents that they have. It's quite impressive. Um, when I was working there, one of the things that I was told at the moment that I finished working on something, I finished a document, I finished the plan, I have to put it on the temple. What is the temple? The temple is this thing. So in addition to the documents and the items, they also have models. This is a model of Herod's temple made by Thames, who was one of the students in the famous um, workshop for the converted Jewish students in Christchurch here in Jerusalem, uh, established by the British missionary. And uh, Thames made a few models. He was a student of Conrad Schick. Conrad Schick was the head of that, uh, of that workshop. And some of these models are actually found in PF in London. So I know whether the Temple of Herod look this way or not, but it's one of the first examples of a model. You know what I mean? This looks more than Antonia. Yeah, yeah, so I just, I just put part of the, mo of the model in this picture. The model continues. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, this was the old entrance to the PF office. The old office was located in uh, central London, near Oxford Circus, if you know. It was kind of one of the uh, back streets, quite difficult to find. But when you find, uh, you basically get to the archives that are were mostly underground, full with materials. Um, now, how did it all start? In order to speak about the Palestine Exploration Fund, we actually have to speak with an enterprise that started even before that, which is the enterprise led by this gentleman, Charles Wilson, a, an officer or a royal engineer in the, in the Her Majesty's Army. And uh, he arrives to Jerusalem in 1864 in order to conduct a survey of water systems. Now, that was uh, his the official excuse. Uh, there was a baroness, Angela Bert Kutz, who donated some money, and that money was <coughs> diverted in order to conduct a water survey. Now, the result of that survey, that is actually was not called the water survey, but uh, it is known today as the Ordnance Survey of Jerusalem, was a systematic mapping of the city. There was the first uh, map that was produced of the Temple Mount, scale 1 to, five, uh, to 500. And, of course, a lot of photographs. If you open that publication, you can see the photographs, original photographs made by MacDonald in 1864-1865. Uh, and, uh, of course, everybody knows today, Wilson's Arch, 
was discovered during that time. However, what usually people try to forget or maybe are not familiar with is that <coughs> this mission brought a lot of excitement inside the British society. And that what made uh, scholars come together with some clergymen, together with uh, academics and uh, military personnel and aristocracy people, uh, dukes and so on, they all came together to Westminster Abbey and decided to establish a scientific society that will explore the Holy Land. Now, this was quite unique. It was unique, first of all, because here we have a cooperation between military, with their knowledge on how you do serving, and academy, and also uh, people that come from the religious background. And they all decided they are going to establish a scientific society, meaning to conduct unbiased research. Um, if you, by the way, interested to learn more about the Python Collection Fund, uh, I will use this stage in order to show you this book that just came out recently. At least three people that are present in this hall contributed articles to this book. Um, the book is made in order to assess the achievements of the Python Collection Fund uh, due to its 150th birthday. So you may have a look. And uh, there are a lot of interesting stories inside. And um, when I speak about the archives in London and the topic of Jerusalem, we can speak about uh, a few different sources. First of all, Charles Warren. So Charles Warren led the first EF mission to Jerusalem. It was not ordinary survey. It was already a mission conducted by PF. However, Warren as an officer comes from the army. So he brings all the uh, skills that he obtained during his army service and um, applies them in the field here. Now, he had a lot of difficulties. Um, one of the things that he couldn't obtain access to the Temple Mount. In his book, he described that he had to actually bribe the guards in order to get entrance and he bribed them by offering them some lizards that they could make on grill. And actually, I wrote a small article on the Jerusalem Post about that incident, and I sent it today to the Palestinian Russian Fund. I asked them, hey, you see, there is an article published about the Palestinian Russian Fund about how Warren managed to get into the Temple Mount, and then to send it to all the subscribers. So, well, you know, something we did in the 19th century, we kind of distribute it today. So the article is still on the Jerusalem Post, was not adopted by the PF, but back to the topic. Um, Warren made a lot of documents, a lot of ideas, a lot of um, a, a lot of drawings, and so on. Um, he also wrote a few books. Uh, this is the famous uh, uh, sketch that he made about his excavations. He excavated in a very unique way by digging shafts near the Temple Mount and then continuing uh, digging tunnels in a horizontal way. And that is a very famous picture made by a, a painter that sent a, at a certain point a company I worn here. The painter was William Simpson. And uh, the painter tried to depict Warren's expedition on work. Now, this is very interesting because when he managed to do that during his short stay in Jerusalem with Warren, he depicted a few of the sites that this is the only way that we know about them. So if you look on the book, mm -hmm. you see there's another picture. This picture is the only visual information about the biggest sister below the surface of the Temple Mount that we have today. It was made by William Simpson, who accompanied Warren. And uh, some of these pictures are actually found in the archives. Another very important source is Conor Chick. So Conor Chick was not, I would say, the core of the PF personnel. He was a German missionary. He was sent by a German Christian organization to Jerusalem. He arrived here. And uh, here he first tried to work 
as a missionary, conduct some activity in that field. At certain point, he became, a, he skilled himself as archaeologist, or if you want to say, what a be archaeologist. We are speaking about 19th century. Uh, and he started to offer his services to different enterprises happening in the city. At a certain point, he also worked as a city engineer for the Ottoman authorities that obtained him access to a lot of sites that were not open for other Europeans at that time. And the interesting thing about Konrachik that he sent reports about his work. Since the time that he started to work for the PF, 1865, until his death in 1901. So most of these materials are located in the PDF, and many of them were not published. That's how it looks a file in PDF archives. You can see a lot of letters, a lot of reports written by hand that are included in a book. And speaking about statistics, you know, about 4,000 maps, plans, documents, 6,000 archaeological objects, um, 400 ethnographical artifacts, huge amount of photographs from 19th century, from 20th century, a lot of information. Now, unfortunately, for most of the uh, items mentioned here, there are no catalogs. So you actually have to go there and look on the materials in order to understand what you are dealing with. We have moved to the new offices in Greenwich. This the picture that I, uh, picture that I received from them for preparing this lecture. I, unfortunately, I didn't have the time in the last months to go there. It's quite new. But still in London, in Greenwich, overlooking the river. Uh, another interesting thing you can find in the PF archives are these items. I know if they defined as an, are, uh, ethno archaeological items or as uh, uh, archaeological objects, but we're speaking about the famous fake figurines made by the uh, famous character called Willem Bode Shapira, uh, who was active here in Jerusalem, and then he was also one of the a most prominent people who tried to uh, s sell forgeries to different museums. Perhaps, maybe, uh, he had some authentic material to try to sell to the British Museum, scrolls of the autonomy. Maybe it is a fake, we don't know, because the item was destroyed. Anyway, there are a lot of models. And I would like to stick a bit, in the time that I have left, on the working methods in the archives and what you can find there that can contribute to archaeology. Again, I didn't bring this picture because it's a good picture of me, but because I wanted you guys to have a look how you can work there. Um, there are almost no scanners. There is only one scanner. This used to be uh, in the office. So the only way that you can uh, record information is by putting such a kind of device, put your camera and just photograph. So I spent two weeks basically photographing different materials. Of course, obviously, it's not in a quality, in, in a good quality for publication. When you need to obtain for publication, you need to actually to purchase this material scan from the PF. And um, one example what you can find in the archives. This is an original field sketch made by Warren of, Ronnie, you probably recognize it? Sure, sure. Of, uh, uh, of uh, the Gihon Spring and Warren Shaft. So you can see this is the spring, and uh, this is the shaft, and you can see Warren or one of his team members is climbing up, and you can see the, over here, uh, perhaps he found part of the, uh, uh, entrance, maybe something else, uh, and the upper part. Now it was resulted in something like that. This is from, that was published already 20, uh, almost 20 years later in the volumes that Warren was responsible in uh, Sarbo Western Palestine. He was responsible for the volume of Jerusalem. And you can compare between the pictures. So this is the first field record. This is the publication that produced. Obviously, some more measurements were required and so on. But you can actually see 
here there is also a person that was copied from here. By the way, this is the entrance to the Siloam Tunnel. <laughs> um, another example. This is the field notebook of the survey of uh, the Ordnance Survey, the one that was made by Wilson in 1864. Uh, they actually measured the different triangulation points, and this is their netbook. Now, most of the materials, by the way, from Wilson Survey are not in the PF. They are in British War Museum and other places. Uh, PF has only some materials from Wilson's work. Most of the materials, when speaking about archaeology, that are important for research, are originate <coughs> from the papers that were sent to PEQ, Python Exploration Quarterly, the journal of the fund. Uh, and uh, some of these papers were even not published. Others went through revision. Some of the um, sketches were omitted, and so on. So when you dig there, you can find a lot of information. And sometimes this information brings new light on the side that we all know. That's how a paper that went through editorial process in the 19th century looked like. You can see this is the paper. You can see the remarks of the editor. And that's how it was published. So you see, that was the original title. That's what it became. Yeah, so it's about the so-called cotton grotto. Um, what I'm trying to say is that the editors, at their discretion, decided to omit some information or to uh, replace certain words. At that time, you couldn't just deliver back a question to corner chick in Jerusalem. So in many cases, they just replaced it. And uh, I'm not saying that always they were correct or always they were uh, wrong, but they definitely made some mistakes. So the challenge is about working these primary sources. Um, that's an example of a document, a typical document. So how much do you have? I think zero, five minutes. Five minutes, one. Thank you. Um, so that's a document uh, authored by Conor Chick. And he said that I think, if one will go out of the city Jerusalem and comes near the northern gate called Bab el Amud, also by some Damascus gate, he sees on its right hand some door or a gate. Now, what I'm trying to say is that the description is not always a scientific description. When I read this document, it reminded me the travel logs of the Crusader travelers who described Jerusalem that they see. They say, you go out, and you see on the left, and you see on the right, and behind the cross, and before the cross, and so on. And so one of the challenges is actually understanding what the 19th century scholars are speaking about. <coughs> there are also some surprises. Uh, for instance, in this letter that was reading about an aqueduct at the time researching on, suddenly I find the next, uh, the next statement. The bottom of the room I could not ascertain, when not moving the skeleton, he's digging inside the grave, of bones and earth. But as I don't like to disturb the dead ones, I left it so. Chick didn't want to dig in graves, so he left it so. Another challenge. A so-called King's Pool. I found this amazing sketch. You see, that is a, a pool that I was very interested in. Uh, it is located in the Kidron Valley, near the Gihon Spring. So this is the Gihon Spring. This is the Kidron Valley. And uh, here, she says the original water course. And there is even parapet wall. Now, if you deal with this area in archaeology of Jerusalem, you know that there is no pool there. I actually double-checked myself and called Ronnie because there is nobody that can compete with Ronnie on knowing about this area, asking, maybe you hear anything about this pool? Um, no. So there is no pool there. And I was uh, very fascinated. Perhaps Sheik knew something that we don't know. In many cases, when you look on his materials, you can find things that existed 
But today we don't have access to them because they're destroyed. Buildings were built, roads were put, and so on. Then I was already very happy that I found a new big water system in Jerusalem, but then I found another sketch. And that sketch is this one in another file that was sent by Sheik. And you can see over here is a crosscut through the uh, Kidron Valley. Uh, this is the valley, and you see the King's Pool. This is the system of the Gihon <coughs> Spring. But then I put, paid attention to something interesting. Over here, it is says the supposed ancient pool. So there is no pool, my friends. It was only supposed by Sheik. And he decided that he's putting it on his sketch. So it's a challenge. And as an archaeologist and historian who's working in the archives, I have to deal with that challenge. Now, speaking on that regard, I actually found a note made by Condor, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Uh, and he said the next thing. He sent it to Dr. Chaplin, uh, who was working here in Jerusalem, the president of the fund. And he said the next thing. Sir Charles Wilson shaved me, old form of English, by the way, for, to understand that, to understand that handwriting, uh, using Yael's advice, I actually used some crowdsourcing on Facebook, and people helped me actually to decide this word and this one. So, Sir Charles also showed me this letter and asked me to send it to you. I concur as to the paper. What we must want from Sheik is a definite account of what he finds. This has indulged in several theories, the publication of which has caused confusion. If he is to dig 4PF, I think Offen and Zion are capital places for him to work on. But he claims to discover so very much on such very slight foundation. Basically, what Condor tries to say is that, hey, we must make sure that Sheik actually writes about what he discovers and not what he imagines. And I found another letter sent by Wilson, that unfortunately I don't have a copy of it, that Wilson writes to Condor in Jerusalem that, could you please instruct Mr. Sheik to uh, draw what he sees and not what he thinks he sees? <laughs> but there are also opportunities, and I'm getting to the end. So, for instance, one of the examples is the famous pool of Hezekiah. Uh, the late Amos Cloner, that unfortunately said goodbye to him just recently, uh, when he uh, worked in the PF, he saw this sketch, but unfortunately he didn't take a photograph. So, <coughs> when I was working in the PF, I found this sketch again, and uh, this is the crosscut through pool of Hezekiah. And the interesting thing about it is that it says here the ancient broad wall. Now, today, this wall is located under the houses of the Christian street. And we are speaking probably about the second wall from the second temple period of Jerusalem. Another thing that I'm doing right now is research that uh, I'm conducting on the northern aqueduct of Jerusalem. It started. Uh, we know it's from here, from uh, the Convent of Zion, and it goes to the Damascus Gate. What I found in the PF is sketches of its roots that were never published, so please do not take pictures of them because I want to publish them. And uh, also, I have very good evidence that this aqueduct went quite north of the old city, and right now I'm reconstructing from where it started, Spoiler, probably from somewhere near Meashari. And I'm finishing. The last thing I would like to show is that you can also find some fascinating local histories there. Uh, Mr. Sheik and Miss Sheik uh, in their late age. Uh, this is a letter that Sheik sent to the PF in 1901. It dates uh, December 16. And he said the next thing. Thanks to God, my health become in the two last weeks improving. His English was not so good, by the way. 
so that I hope to fulfill the 80 years of which the sun speaks at the highest in human life, which will take place 27 January 1902, when he will become 80. And Miss Chic will be next month 76 years in age. So we both are old and worn out people and will be happy when we may go home. For scriptum, I hope next time to be able again to write letters, please excuse me for this. Unfortunately, Mr. Sheik passed away just several days after sending this letter. 26th, 26th of December, yes. So thank you so much. This is just a, a short overview of the archives. Uh, I encourage you to visit the artist by yourself, and I'm sure you'll be able to find a lot of interesting information there, starting from Jerusalem and ending with the different sites that were started by the PF all around the area.